copy of the newsletter. Did you yeah, see? Yeah, I will upload it. Um, and we're live. We are live now. Oh, look who we have. <laughs> Wait, Good what morning. day is it? It's Wednesday and we have Ken today. Hi, Ken. How are you? <laughs> Great. How are you, Jennifer? Good to see you. It's nice to see you. The pair of jeans are not feeling good this morning. Sorry, I have my little frog in my throat. And so Ken was so gracious to jump on and be my co-host. So I'm not here talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that can be dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> and wildly misinterpreted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I thought we would talk about Ken and Phyllis have been talking about the past two weeks or week and a half about the officer roles of, of our Toastmasters and what it takes to run our meetings and, and get back to the membership. And I thought that was kind of interesting. You guys have been doing a really great job on it. Well, and so it was in my mind uh, you know, to talk about today our favorite roles and why. Uh, Ken gave a list and what everybody's responsibilities are. I think he just has to do secretary and treasurer Right, the next and then sergeant at arms. Don't forget and, sergeant. Oh, well, don't forget sergeant at arms. I am sergeant at arms. <laughs> my club right now at Valley Voices and Vices and membership VPM. And I really like sergeant at arms because I really <laughs> don't have much to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, so if you're if you're still virtually meeting on on Zoom, the sergeant at arms role was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and actually, as I'm learning, there are other responsibilities of the sergeant at arms. So it's it's kind of kind of cool of of being. I'm hoping that we are for Valley Voices and Vices that we will be meeting in person and online here in a couple of weeks. So I'm I'm hoping for that. The credit union is is we're meeting with them to determine if we were able, because they were going to give it some thought and we wanted to sit down with them face to face and say, hey, this is what we have. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Anyway, um, so Ken, what has been your favorite role of being an officer? Of oh my goodness. There are so many that have uh, you know, different aspects of the role that I like. But I, I, I think probably the role that I have filled most often is that of secretary, you know, and that's a good role. I like that role. It's a very uh, supporting role, very well defined. But I like it because um, uh, you do sort of, by keeping track of things, being the record keeper, the person who keeps all the records for the club, it's, it helps to keep you in tune with what's going on with the club and you know when you fill out your minutes and you post those minutes to pre-toast host or whatever methodology your club uses mm -hmm. uh, it pretty much keeps you in tune and then you're of course the backup uh, base camp manager yeah and for me I think I just kind of fell into that role and then you know I served three times as the district wow. Secretary, uh, once in District 33, when Guy Dawson was our district director, and we, was, we were still part of California, I was the administration manager, and then twice under District 115. But uh, Secretary and probably VPE, Vice President of Education, are my two favorite. What about you? Really? Well, let's go back to that VPE. Okay. I will tell you. <laughs> Well, I can see how secretary and VPE would be uh, actually both because they kind of run side by side of, of it because you're maintaining the meeting and the minutes and, and knowing what's going on. And VPE, you know what's going on because our, our biggest part of our organization is our um, president's points, our president's uh, distinguished points. And as a VPE, you are monitoring those points because of the fact that that's our, basically our foundation of our club. So I can see both of those being uh, going side by side of, of favorites because of the fact that you are your, I don't want to say it, your pulse is in the club, on the club. So, 
Anyway, so my favorite, you talked about that yesterday, was the vice president is the vice president of public relations. I think that is the funnest part of being a Toastmaster and in a club because of the fact that it's, I'm a very social person. Jean and I talked about being the introverts and extroverts. I think it's, yeah, Jean Williams and I, and and I'm definitely, I think I'm a rare Toastmaster because I think that we were talking about how Toastmasters are introverts and I did not join Toastmasters because I was shy. <laughs> I just joined because I wanted to be able to just throw out some of my words a little better than versus how I was doing it. So that I can find the words a little bit more quicker, you know, to be able to say. So anyway, so that's why I joined. So it wasn't anything about being shy. So when it comes to VPPR, I will put myself out there and I will talk to people. I will do the social media. I will do the videos. I will do everything. And I try to encourage. And I think that's one of the big things is encouraging people to do the same. So that's where I really, really like that position because I don't want to keep Toastmasters a secret. And so that's why I kind of blasted out a lot of who we are and some of our presentations. That's I did it for Valley Voices and Vices for a year. And I would take the presentations and, <clears throat> and cut them up and post them on Facebook and talk about them and stuff. And so, and that was a lot of fun. And that was, I would record, take my camera and just record the entire meeting and then break it up into, into little bits. So there was always content on Valley Voices and Vices for that. So, you know, I, I, uh, the, that's the one role that I'm, I'm a bit intimidated by the BPPR. Mainly because I don't feel that comfortable uh, with social media. I've certainly gotten better doing Wake Up with Toastmasters. <laughs> yes, and, you have. <laughs> posting stuff and, you know, all the Zoom meetings we're constantly having. Because my club is also still meeting on Zoom. Yeah. We, we lost our meeting place and we haven't voted to go back in to, to find another right now. <laughs> uh, but anyway... I don't feel that I really have a good grasp of all the social media outlets that you should have when you are BPPR. That's something I haven't quite learned as well as I, sh I should know, you know? You know, one of the things that you will bring to the table is versus the, the social media is also <clears throat> that you like that face-to-face -face communication. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that you do, and that you could go to different places like Phyllis talks about, you know, go to different businesses, you can talk to businesses and bring on that, that role. So, or to bring forth that role of being able to say, talk about Toastmasters versus all the posting on Facebook. And that could be an, an introvert thing, right? Where uh -huh. you're posting and nobody sees you, right? <laughs> uh, nobody really knows. I'm just posting this. Nobody can see me. So that's, that's an, an introvert's dream because, uh -huh. you know, nobody sees all you got to do is post and leave, post and leave, post and leave. So I haven't know, looked at it that way. Yeah. So the videos, of course, that would be more of being shy than all oh, the whole world. But what's the difference between doing a video and then approaching <clears throat> somebody in at HR, or approaching a president of a company saying, talking about Toastmasters? There's basically to me, there's no difference. I, I do like the videos because it will get out to more people versus knocking on the door and you're spending an hour knocking on the door and you're only meeting five people versus you could do a video and then you could see thousands of people. So that's my, my thing. I, yeah, I can understand that. And it, it's certainly a different world than it was pre-pandemic. And yeah. I keep thinking <laughs> and I talk to people and they say, well, I can't wait to go back to, to where we were. And I'm like, what? No, we're not going back to where we were. 
That's yeah. <laughs> we've, we've moved on. It's a very different world now. And, yeah, we have uh, moved on. There is no more of the way we were. That is yeah. not going to happen. It's, you know, it's, I will just say about the mask and everything. It's still when people are wearing masks or if I get up, from my desk, I don't, we don't have to wear a mask in our office, but I still feel like I'm forgetting something when I get up. (laughs) (laughs) So there's no going back to where we are. This is, this is our new normal, everyone. So Mm -hmm. we will be knocking on doors though. We have that capability, right? To knock on doors, but we will rely, I'm sure on social media a whole lot more than what we did before. So. Yeah, I think that's true, and, and I think that requires a certain adjustment. I was talking with uh, some friends, um, fellow Toastmasters, about you know, what does Toastmasters look like today, and there really are three models that you can uh, adapt or adopt, I should say. One is, of course, in person, mm-hmm. so, and my Bon Appetit Club meets in person only. You know, we phased out the hybrid portion of our meeting because we saw uh, fewer and fewer people attending in the hybrid yeah. format and more people wanting to get together. Yeah. So my Bon Appetit Club is exclusively in person. Yes. My home club is Early Risers, which meets here in about 15, 16 minutes. Yeah. Uh, we are exclusively still online. Yeah. Uh, and then there are other clubs I went last night to a, a club meeting for H and B Speakeasy, and they're hybrid. Yeah. So, <laughs> so those are the models. You're either 100% in person, mm-hmm. you're hybrid, or you're 100% online, and that and that's the uh, the model that we, the models I should say that we have. Yeah. And I think that does create a different kind of challenge for the VPPR. Mm-hmm. Than back in the day when we nobody had ever heard of Zoom, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, or Google Meet or Microsoft yeah, or any other yeah uh, of the platform. other platforms or Cisco WebEx. I've, I've <laughs> used them all. Yeah, it's definitely definitely will pose a problem, but I think that it also will make it just a little easier. I think that. Uh, Toastmasters International will have to have the three slots, right? Hybrid or online so that we can have that those choices to be able to make sure that people can find us. That's, that's yeah, I think they're going to have to, you know, we, uh, we were the other topic you wanted to discuss was were the contest. And, you know, I love contests. I've said that before. I've been involved <laughs> in contests throughout my Toastmasters career and you know sort of one of the controversies that arose this year was the question of why can't contests be hybrid yeah we were allowed to of course to do streaming yes but that's that's just sort of like watching the contest or like mm-hmm. watching a show on television yep. something like that but I, I understand completely their reasoning uh, the reasoning behind that is it is it creates an unfair advantage for, let's say you had contestants that were mixed, some were in person, some were online in a hybrid attendance kind of thing, uh, that really creates a, uh, an unfair advantage for those folks who are in person. Yeah. There's absolutely no question <clears throat> for me anyway, that a um, in-person meeting or an in-person contest is a very, very different experience yes. than online. Uh, I think contests are the one thing that uh, really don't translate as well. Now, some of our other things, like like the TLI, yeah, that on the other hand, I think does translate pretty well. Yeah, education, uh, education <laughs> to uh, to online. I have to tell you, you know, I used to teach for UNLV, and, and uh, I taught some classes that were three hours in length. Wow. And yeah, and three of these these classes uh, online were just awful. <laughs> <laughs> and part of the reason was was the length. People got tired, and you didn't. I didn't see the kind of interaction. Uh, yeah, any, on, yeah. You don't but, get that interaction definitely because mm-hmm. you can't 
communicate and talk over people, you know, like you do when you're in person, because at least you can pause, but you have that delay, right? And, and mm-hmm. you don't, and you don't, people are distracted about, oh, what's going on? That's somebody's coming into a room or you're, you have your phone. You, you just don't have that attention span. Yeah. Well, you're right. And I, I think the reason the TLI works online is because it's only a 50 minute class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you were sitting online for three hours in a class, uh, mm-hmm. it would be very, very different. And that's, you know, one of the reasons I decided to kind of retire from teaching is at the time we were in the, the thick of the pandemic and mm-hmm. all we were doing was online classes. And I was like, ah, oh, uh, this just isn't getting it. But, <laughs> and I feel the same way about contests. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, yes, we we were very successful in holding them online mm-hmm. uh, during the pandemic, but I truly, truly missed that in-person feel of a contest. Yeah, uh, it, There's just no replacing that. And uh, last Saturday, I know you were there at the C1, C2, and I think you've pretty much been to all of them as well. I have, yeah. I know you yeah. have, because mm-hmm. uh, I see all the, the pictures you post, and they're wonderful, by the way. You and Cynthia have done such a great job. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, there's just nothing like an in-person contest. And it is, it's great to be able to feel the excitement and and how people enjoyed the, the presentations. You know, you see everybody clapping on the Zoom, right? Versus <laughs> hearing the applause and feeling the applause of the contest or the the audience and it it was great it was a lot of fun all of the areas put in their best effort and it was a lot of fun the attending I think it was five yeah 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 five or so uh, (laughs) yeah I have to go back and count them yeah (laughs) but we still have a couple to go we have the area uh, a and b on the 23rd Division. To that. I mean, division. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'm, I'm so focused. We've had area content. Yeah. Now we're moving on to division on the 23rd for A and B, mm-hmm. and April 30th for C and D, and then, of course, the district on May 14th. So yes. That's super, terrific. Super yeah. excited to see who's going to take it all to the, the to the big the, stage. <laughs> Nashville, maybe. All the way to Nashville. That would yep. be nice, wouldn't it, if we have... Well, I think we've had some really, really terrific uh, contestants this year in the international yeah. contest, mm-hmm. and I can see uh, several that I've that I've had the pleasure of listening to and, and uh, uh, throughout this this contest season, easily moving on up. So yeah. that's we have a wealth of talent in yeah. District One One Five. And that's one of the things I actually told Cynthia, my sister. I said. Cynthia, we were talking about, you know, the next leadership roles for me. And I go, there's a lot of people who could easily be on our district leadership team. There's a, that we're meeting, that we're listening to them speak, what their desires are, you know, when we do the Mm -hmm. interviews. And I am really excited for who we have in our district to be able to move on to district leadership and and contribute. And I'm hoping if they're listening that they're going to be willing to serve the next couple of years through our leadership because there's a lot of talent in our in our organization. And I think again, like I don't want to keep Toastmasters a secret. I don't think we should keep our members talents a secret as well. (laughs) Well, I think you're absolutely right. And I know we do still have some area director roles to fill for the the new fiscal year that starts July 1. And it's just a really, uh, we were talking about officers, one of the the best, funnest, funnest is not really, (laughs) most fun, I guess, is the correct, uh, grammatically correct. Where's our grammarian? Yeah. <laughs> the most fun uh, role is really uh, area director. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember back in the day it was called area governor. Yeah. But that was really my first exposure, other than contest, to getting out and seeing how other clubs worked. Mm-hmm. And I really, I, you know, by the end of my tenure as, as an area governor, I then moved on to be, be a division governor. But 
by the end of my tenure, I kept thinking, well, you know, I should do this again. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. <laughs> it was because you, you just have an opportunity to get out and see how other clubs do things. And each has their own unique character and mm -hmm. uh, their members are all, uh, they do things maybe just a little bit different uh, within the parameters that we have. And it was just fun uh, to meet all the, the folks that were in these clubs and, uh, you know, get out and around. And yeah. of course, all of the clubs back then was a while it, from the term area governor. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. was a while back <laughs> when I was when I served in that role uh, and everything was in person. So you got to go and you know, sit in on meetings, and sometimes participate in meetings if you were invited. But it was always a great thing. And I always loved um, helping out with installations, new mm -hmm. member installations and yeah. those kinds of things. Because uh, when you're the area director, you get invited. Uh, yeah. At least yeah. I did. Come and, <laughs> yeah, come and, come and do yeah. our installation. So yeah, yeah no, I know. And, sure. it's, and it is a great way to meet people and to, to see what skill sets other people have. So it's, I think in the contest, when we're listening to interviews of the contestants, <clears throat> excuse me, that, <clears throat> sorry, this is my voice is, but it's great to hear like their desires and their dreams and, and where they want to take Toastmasters. So I'm hoping that I'll see them, you know, in at least as I'm growing that I'll see them as well coming along. So I'm pretty excited about that. I know you have to get to your uh, club. It is 623, so I don't want to keep you and very okay. refreshing to get well, in. I want to thank you for inviting me today. Well, thank you for <laughs> joining. It was a lot of fun. It's um, a rare Ken sighting. So <laughs> Ken, just a reminder, Ken and Phyllis will be on tomorrow morning. They'll talk about the secretary's role. Yep. And uh, you'll see Jean and Jean hopefully on Friday. And yes, then we want to let's make sure we wish them well. I know they're yes. both feeling a little under the weather this morning. So if they're watching or if they sign in later, let's make sure we wish them well. Yes. Get, get better soon. Get better. Um, and because we need you guys. So <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We do indeed. Well, thank you, Jennifer. I'm gonna sign off and All say right. bye to our audience. So I'll let you wrap things up. Okay, and, and whatever announcements you have to make. And it's yeah. just been a pleasure being with you this morning, as always. You're always you. even at, even at six in the morning, you're just so friendly and bubbly <laughs> and you know, ready to take on the world. And I just really <laughs> love that. So oh, thank you. I will see you probably at the next contest, if not before. All right. We'll see you later. Okay. All right. Bye -bye. Have a good, Have a good one. Bye -bye. All right. So on that note, I can see just me now. Um, on that note, we have our divisions. We talked about our division contest on the, uh, April 23rd and the 30th. So come and visit us there. And then um, don't forget about game night, which is the last Saturday of the month. And if you are interested in game night and you are not a member, just reach out to us and we will be able to get you that link. Other than that, it is Wednesday. It is time to get ready for the day. Hope you guys have a great day. It's hump day and we will see you next Wednesday.